Banks face a growing mortgage risk. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee. Let's have a look at this article from S&P uh, Global Market Intelligence. Australia's major banks face rising mortgage risk, but there's no cause for alarm yet. What do you reckon, everyone? Do you trust them? Let's have a look at what they've written here before we go through some other things, some good economic news and the RBA's perspective. So Australia's major banks face rising mortgage risk, but no cause for alarm yet. And remember, in the past, particularly in the GFC, people were telling us everything was fine. So major banks in Australia face rising mortgage risk as more home buyers are borrowing over 95% of the value of their properties, while some supportive government policies last although analysts say there is little cause for alarm yet. In the three months ending December 2020, residential mortgages with a, low, uh, with a loan to value ratio of at least 95% increased 27.4% from a year earlier. Although this segment remained the smallest proportion of the sector's mortgage book, according to the Australian Prudential Regulator Regulation Authority, the year-over-year -year increase which was much higher than the 15.4% growth for mortgages with an LTV ratio of between 60 and 80%, as well as the 9.7% growth for home, home loans with an LTV ratio of below 60%, according to the regulator's quarterly report on bank statistics released on the 16th of March. We can see here. So... Mortgage stress is always a potential risk for the banks given their large exposure to this segment, but it doesn't appear to be an imminent risk. Um, Omkar Jossi, Principal and Portfolio Manager at Opal Capital Management, told S&P Global Market Intelligence in an email. Obviously, we still need to see how the economy progresses. Lending standards have generally been pretty good across the industry. The banks are also well positioned, or sorry, well provisioned, for any potential issues, he said. Home buyers have been rushing to the market, with new residential mortgage lending up 20.2% to $128.1 billion in the December 2020 quarter from a year earlier, according to the Australian Prudential Regulation Authority. A record low policy interest rate, the government's wage subsidy program JobKeeper, as well as a policy of guaranteeing home loans for eligible first home buyers with a minimum deposit of 5% of their property value are believed to have encouraged home purchases, analysts said. So when the support winds down. Research from Roy Morgan earlier showed that when JobKeeper ends on the 28th of March, which it already has, around 20% of mortgage borrowers as of November 2020 could be at risk. The end of the wage subsidy could mean up to 150,000 jobs lost, Australia's Treasury Secretary Stephen Kennedy said in a March 24th statement to Parliament. However, Kennedy added that part of the impact could be cushioned by the recovery of the labour market, which saw the jobless rate fall to 5.8% in February from its recent peak of 7.5% during the pandemic. And now it's actually down to 5.6% at the latest data that we have. Households are under pressure with mortgage stress, flat incomes and rising costs, said Martin North, founding principal and banking sector analyst at Australian-based Digital Finance Analytics. North added that lending standards might be deteriorating despite the country's lending laws still in place, as Australia is considering relaxing its responsible lending rules for banks. I don't know if that's going to have that much of an impact, to be honest. I don't think the banks are going to be that... I mean, banks' job is to manage risk. They know how to manage risk, and they do that. They do everything they can. They're not there to help you. They're not there to be your friends. They manage risk and make profit doing that. So I can't imagine that relaxing the onerous government obligations, I think in some regards it may just be a bit of like the you know security theater from the state. It makes people feel good, makes people feel better. I wonder if it'll make that much difference, to be honest. Grant uh, Halverson, CEO of McLean Roche, a retail banking and payment consulting firm, added NPLs are very low and show no signs of moving higher. By June, it will be clearer how the issues will track. Right now, it's just an opinion and guesswork. There is no evidence of any declines in lending standards or banks and other lenders chasing market share. If that happens, it will emerge later this year, Halverson said. The Australian Prudential Regulation Authority 
said in the, uh, the quarterly report that overall residential mortgage asset quality could deteriorate only uh, so it could deteriorate over coming quarters as repayment deferral expired and government stimulus changes how changes however some of these impacts may be offset by continued improvement in the economy and low interest rates the regulator added that majority of outstanding residential mortgage loans remain well covered by collateral despite the increase in loans and the higher ltv ratios Asset quality of housing loans is also stable, with residential mortgage non-performing loan ratios falling 1% to December 2020 from 1.1 in September that year, the regulator said. And another thing to consider, you know, when we're looking at housing stress, often they'll say, or mortgage stress, they'll say if you have to spend more than 30% of your, your disposable income on these mortgages to make these payments. But how many people, you know, is, is that an outdated metric? Because how many people have had to do more than that just to save to get a bloody bloody deposit to get into the sector? So if, if oh no, interest rates have gone up, okay, we've got to pay even more. Well, it's going to be like when we were renting and saving our deposit. The mortgage rush. While risk may not be alarming for now, the mortgage-focused Australian banks are enjoying a boost to their bottom lines amid the housing boom. Commonwealth Bank of Australia, the country's largest bank by assets reported above system growth in its home lending business for the fis for fiscal first half ending December 31, 2020. The bank said in February that its approvals for home loans reached 179,000, up 32 percent from 136 in the prior year. CBA said it had a 25.2 percent share of Australia's home lending market compared with the next rival Westpac Banking Corp with a 21.6 percent market share. The strength in the housing market is positive for the bank earnings and it doesn't appear that banks have reduced their lending standards and increased their risk profiles, Josh, Joshi said. Australians banks are benefiting from a resurging housing market as their profit is still significantly driven by mortgage book growth and if loan volumes net grow they will benefit North Added. So let's have a look at, with that in mind, let's look at some good economic news, everyone, that's essentially come out since this note was released. We can see, as I said, the job ads are now down again to 5.6%. The problem is if you're looking, following the news, following the stuff that you could get be influenced by confirmation bias, particularly if you just go down one rabbit hole, and that's, that's the algorithm on YouTube. YouTube algorithm can, can pigeon you down a rabbit hole so you're just getting an echo chamber of the same things. So I'm trying to look at, trying to get a balanced perspective here, guys. Uh, and we can have job ads. They're returning to normal, guys. They're going up. You've got, well, steel production is up. We're a huge iron ore exporter. Building approvals are up. The market's overheating, but that still is going to mean more jobs and more demand. Let's look at the RBA perspective now, okay? The RBA will not raise rates to slow the housing boom, everyone. That does, you know, that's what Lowe said. That's what Lowe has said. We have a look here. There's housing prices have grown in Australia. They're overheating, but from 2017, they're overheating more in other parts of the world. It seems to be a common thing. So risks for small businesses risks are elevated in industries most affected by the pandemic for small businesses so you've got some businesses that are doing okay it, it really is we, we have a k-shaped economy here it, tourism is going to cop it guys that's going to be the biggest thing here you've got banks have been resilient not just in australia but all over the world you've got housing finances have improved our deposits the cash that people have is on hand is going up mortgage prepayments are ahead You've got liquidity buffers that people have. Renters, two months. Homeowner, you know, mortgagees are nearly four months. Outright homeowners are 10 months. Pre prepayments of mortgages are at high levels. So you've got to whittle away through all of this before we start seeing massive flows onto the market, which can affect the property. So what, what I think will happen is the bank will start quietly tapping, tapping people on the shoulders to kind of push those that are really, you know, in trouble to get out. You've got home loans and negative equity that's heading down. Here's the house, uh, home housing loan characteristics, everyone. So negative equity is, well, there you go. It's, it's, it's like where it was in 2016. Business insolvencies are down and they've begun to rise. This is another thing to consider. We're going to see in the media about business insolvencies going up, even if we just return to normal levels. Some businesses are going to go. 
commercial property there are risks presented with that there's arguments that there's a cultural shift away from having to work in commercial property because we're all working from home it's going to be interesting to see how that manifests and if that affects some of the real estate investment trusts here you've got offices industrial properties they're the winners look at that valuation there for industrial properties probably as more people are working from home working remotely there's more need for logistical services and solutions to all of this well Prepare for the worst and hope for the best, everyone. That's what I'd say. And watch for confirmation bias in your media. You know, safe haven assets. Are you going into gold? Are you going into crypto? I still think the average Australian punter is just going to go into property. I think that's all we know. And here's the one thing. Our government has demonstrated that they will intervene in the market. No holes barred. We've got a conservative party in power now. Look at how much debt they've racked up. It'll be nearly 1.3 trillion in 2024 when you count the states and federal. Is that the one certainty that you can count on? And, you know, if money's going to get worthless, what's the average Aussie going to put it in? What do you reckon, guys? It's going to go into property. As always, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.